so what I did recently is I pulled the fire ring off of this um, onion bed. It's a bed of onions and so that's why there's this uh, edging here. And I moved it elsewhere and um, I started a new bed of red onion bulbs that I got from Lowe's because, <clears throat> because they're selling onion bulbs again. And you can do the same with shallots. They had shallot bulbs and they also had garlic bulbs and so this one's probably one of my biggest bulbs of onion and you can thin it out and also um, onions need a lot of fertilizer and a lot of water which I haven't been doing much of either the other thing you can do is harvest the green the tops as green onions or thin it out as you grow it so this was what I got from last year's set of about 65 onions, I think. Not last year's, but late last year's. And so over here is where I placed the new fire, where I placed the fire ring and started a new garden bed of onions. So I got only red onions. The other one, the old one had um, green onions. I mean, I'm sorry, white onions, yellow onions, and red onions. And this set is just uh, red onions because I love the flavor and I would like to have it for a lot of dishes. And it's going to be summer and hopefully it doesn't, um, the bulbs don't rot. So I don't know if you can see. Um, Here's one where the onion is peep the greens are peeping out. And that's just only a day. And the soil has a lot of mulch on it because I'll show you why right now. Over here, uh, last year we cut down our huge mulberry tree th that it was wonderful and that it provided shade. However, it was a place where ivy was growing and covering the whole tree and killing it. And it was a space where critters like possums and things would crawl up into. So, and it was a fruitless mulberry tree. So that was the third reason why we decided to cut it down. And when they cut it down, um, the tree service, they also mulched it in place for us and so this this here broke down it's been a year and it has broken down so well that um, it's providing great soil it doesn't look like it but that's what it looks like as soon as I move the upper layers and it looks really nice um, so yeah, that's what it looks like when you move, remove the upper layers. And it offered probably two or three feet of mulch, which broke down and became about two feet of mulch, which I put into that fire ring and gave me a whole new garden bed, just like that in a jiffy. Over here I have my donut peach and it's still alive I see some green right here and not sure about up here it looks really crusty but it's always hard to tell with these um, sort of plants um, but I'm pretty sure it's alive you can just kind of scrape the the branch if you want to see if it's alive but I'm, I'm I'm gonna trust that it is alive there's still some more greens here it's my donut peach tree I bought um, last year from Lowe's $25.98 and what I did was I um, started emptying my old um, worm bin and starting a new one so all the top layer of compost I moved to a different worm bin a worm tower and underneath was all the worm castings and it was 
It was rich in dark, warm castings. So I pulled this um, donut peach tree out of a pot and I planted it here and making sure not to bury the um, the root bulb too deeply and I put a lot of the worm castings here as you can see there are some eggshells but it was really rich thick stuff I mean it's the kind of stuff that they said if you squeeze the, the worm castings um, it'll hold its shape because it was um, rich it has a it has like a unique quality to it that you could tell it was rich soil and what I did was I took the worm castings and spread it around all my potted plants which need extra nutrients fertilizer and I decided to use that S something that I made in in situ here on the site so here's a little bit of the worm castings it's dark and rich compared to the mulch that's around the yarrow here and calendula. The calendula is doing fantastic. This is a different variety than the one I had in the previous years. It's um, it's a very thin, like only two layers of flowers, of petals, as opposed to previous years that had many, many layers. And more worm castings worm castings near my society garlic and um, made me sapote worm castings for my shinseki pear and here I'm trying to propagate the shinseki pear so that's one that's another and then here's a third one which looks half buried so what happened was something climbed to my tree and broke the main stem and it was a huge tall probably three feet of branch that it broke which really upset me and so I decided to take the cuttings and put them into the so I'd, however I did not cover it and keep the, the keep the layer moist um, like they tell you to so we'll see if it makes it um, and I gave one of the main cutting to my dad and my apple tree in the front is starting to have blooms and same with this apricot here lots of cute little pinkish blooms gorgeous my pineapple guava is doing fantastic. It's got new buds. So spring is coming and a lot of the plants are starting to do really well. And here is one of the eggs for the um, praying mantids and it has not yet um, hatched. There are two on this tree that I know of. Uh, here's the other one. Right there. This is my nice, beautiful bloom um, from my apple tree. It's a four-in-one apple tree. So let's see what the early crop is. So this pink blossom, which is the first one to bloom, which probably means it's the first crop, the first uh, apple variety is the Brayburn. Brayburn apple. As you can see, this is the season that my lemon tree starts um, having lots of lemons and they're turning from green to yellow and starting to get really big like this here nice and healthy clusters it's time to make lots of lemon bars lemonade give some away i like to share it with my co-workers and my family and some friends 
and neighbors as well. Some warm castings in my mango tree. Some warm castings in my cherry moya. And some in my bubblegum tree. Some more warm castings in my blood orange tree. And what happens is when you water it in, all the nutrients soak down into the other layers and it offers a top layer of soil to keep the roots warm so that it won't rot. I mean, so that it doesn't freeze. Kind of an insulative property. My kefir lime tree is doing fantastic. It's got new buds, new leaves, which are those dark purple leaves. Tons and tons of flowers. There's one kefir lime that's starting to get bigger. And in Thai cooking and other Asian cooking, you take the leaves and you kind of crush them and um, stick them into stews and other and soups and they taste fantastic. There are clusters and clusters of flowers on my Mexican lime tree and there were many more clusters but now it's starting to form the little baby fruit as you can see. So Last year my dahlias started to dry out and die and I kind of left them in the pot. I didn't dig them out. And so here are the, car the branches from when it got really tall. So I'll just pull them out and let them um, rot in place over in the mulch pile here. And so now I'm noticing the new flowers coming from it. They kind of look like chili pepper, um, but they have like a little fringe or what, I'm not sure what you call it here on the edge of the leaves. So I know that's the dahlia and it's growing right where the dahlia stalks were. So during the off season, I wanted to um, grow something in here. So I threw a bunch of um, anise seeds in here and some other seeds something else is growing in here I threw a succulent in here so we're just gonna have a bed a garden I mean a pot full of various things in here so that'll be interesting when it pops up I've been cutting all the flowers off of my basil my Thai basil and so hopefully it'll survive the rest of winter. It's supposedly gonna get warm in the next few days. However, it says it's forecasted to rain this week and we'll see about that because even though it forecasted rain the last two times, it was hardly even a sprinkle. Over here I put some warm castings at the base of my, I believe is my kumquat tree that I grew from seed however I don't know what it will be as I have not seen a fruit yet however it has all the features of a citrus tree it's got the same type of leaves the thorns if you can see them and <clears throat> this is the first year that I've seen it so green and lush and so beautiful uh, it is so healthy <clears throat> it struggled for the, about three years in a pot and I finally put it in the ground when I had good enough mulch and soil underneath the soil this mulch it's really really nice <clears throat> um, so what happened was I planted my society garlic right next to it and you want to do that. You want to have a variety of plants to grow around um, your garden at the base of your fruit trees so that they offer different aromas that ward off insects and pests. So this society garlic smells of, like a very strong garlic. 
it has a very strong garlic smell and you could harvest these young thin um, grass grass like leaves and chop them up real thin and put them in your dishes um, it'll flavor your dishes with that onions that onion flavor as well here is my wonderful jasmine plant from my mom's house I've been trying to have cuttings from it for a long time and it suffered it was just this measly um, little branch little twig and it finally is growing and doing really well and unfortunately all the leaves fell off my persimmon tree that I grew from seed and I'm hoping that it will come back and, and that it's still alive and um, in fact there were two cut two trees in here however one didn't make it so this is the strong one and I put some worm castings in here so as you can see some eggshells and stuff and I'm hoping that it'll break down and feed and keep this plant alive I'm hoping that everything's doing really well so we'll see um, let's see yeah there we go just trying to uncover everything oh gosh yeah that feeling of it's kind of muddy it holds its shape the worm the worm castings I know it's full of nutrients here is my lemongrass um, so lemongrass likes hot weather and in the cold it starts to suffer quite a bit so it started turning brown but I could tell it's still alive because the main stalks are, are green at the bottom so this one will do fantastic I'm gonna find a spot for it because I have several numerous spots of lemongrass as you know if, if you've been following me I grow them all throughout just like the society garlic here are my new rose cuttings that are doing pretty good. I had a few die off, but I've got at least three in this pot and at least two in that pot that are alive. And I'll have to like split them and transfer them out into separate pots. However, I put some warm castings in them and um, same with this semi-dwarf Bartlett pear tree and underneath I grew a lot of brassicas and over there I've got uh, Sue Bell Sapote. I've got two of them side by side and I threw some warm castings in them and my other smaller loquat tree and it's doing really good this year. I mean, look at those beautiful leaves and it's so healthy. I think I'm gonna plant this one in the front. So this is a first for me. I don't know if it will work, but what happened was in the winter, I when the plant was dormant, I trimmed my apricot tree because it's kind of, uh, it's a semi-dwarf, but it got really tall and I didn't want it to when it starts to leaf out To cover all my other plants and not allow them to have enough sunlight so I took cuttings and I just popped them into the ground and I did not add rooting hormone um, I was just kind of lazy. So we'll see if they survive. I've been keeping it moist this one's really good. It's got little green buds as if it's going to start to have leaves from there. And I haven't been trying to touch them very much to, to allow them to make roots. So here's one where there's a little bud that looks like the bud's going to flower. So hopefully it makes it. And I threw a lot of worm, um, what do you call those? worm castings in here as well and I don't know if you can see I cleaned out m my chicken coop pulled out all the dried dead weeds they were mostly grass and what I do is I just go around the property pull up all the crab grass and um, stuff them in here and use it as bedding and the chickens just poop on it 
So the chickens poop on the dead, the grass, the crab grass and the weeds, and then um, it starts to dry out. And um, eventually, when it's really full of poop, then I gather it all up and I compost the the um, that bedding, and that way it will provide fertilizer. Um, and, and compost in the future and it breaks down within that year so in the meantime I had saved enough newspapers and grocery store ads and paper to um, to make the bedding here where I threw diatomaceous earth with it and now the chickens are coming to say hello because they hear my voice over here <laughs> I'm not sure if you could see my huge chili pepper tree, or <laughs> practically, it's about three and a half feet tall, making new little baby chili peppers. And I've been harvesting tons of snap peas and snow peas for my daughter. And here's one. She likes to eat them fresh or yeah, I haven't had to cook them because she likes to eat them fresh. Here is a big green one and several more chilies in, over here. My broccoli's right there. So I've been feeding my chili plants um, some of that soil, that mulch that broke down. Then I put some worm castings in here and um, I dropped some eggshells now and then because chili peppers like calcium so I did that so hopefully this year I'll have a nice bumper crop and hopefully my bell pepper ch um, plant doesn't die because I've been trying to feed it the nasturtiums are doing great I mean this garden bed here is chock full I used to have my spicy basil and blue basil and it's just been overtaken as you see all the little red and orange blooms are all from my nasturtium and um, I'll just let it be I mean you can eat these leaves you can eat the flowers it's got a black pepper taste in here I have some elephant garlic growing and some green onions of course I didn't get to cut down all the branches from my um, spicy basil and I threw a lot of its seed heads into the soil down below so we'll see if they pop back up this year as the weather heats up I think the nasturtium's not going to do too well it does well in the cold however not too cold because let me show you what happened over here we had a spell of <clears throat> cold or something because it shriveled up or it could be that I for a couple days I forgot to water I didn't forget I just purposely decided not to water my plants too frequently um, because I was just trying to conserve water so I didn't water my plants too frequently so I watered it like five days apart <laughs> that might have been too far I should have done it on the watered it on the fourth day however the majority of the plant is still alive it's doing well and still blooming so maybe I sacrificed a couple leaves here and there the hollyhock is doing fantastic this is a new uh, plant that came up last year and it overwintered and now it's coming up nice and it's going to form a flower eventually. It takes quite a while. But once it's established every year it will come back. And you know next time while it's still small I may transplant it some, someplace else. Here is my fennel. It's in the same family as the anise and dill. Um, my daughter likes to pluck off the leaves and rinse it and eat it. Um, she really loves this stuff and I, I love that she loves it. <laughs> it's kind of unique that a small child would gravitate towards.